Hmm. Hey everyone, Jay's Grass Fed Garden, just doing a little uh, certification with my new friend Rebecca Nice here. Re Rice. Rice, I'm sorry. That's okay. And uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna ask her a few questions and do this little mini interview. So let's uh, let's get into it. So you want to introduce yourself and sure where your farm is located. So yeah, my name is Rebecca Rice. I farm over in New York State in Albany County, about nine miles from downtown Albany. Okay. And I mostly grow flowers, although I used to mostly grow vegetables. Mm. And I also have sheep and chickens and you can see it all when you come visit me for sure. I'm looking forward to showing you around yeah so today I'm here to certify you for certified naturally grown which is my um, certification of choice so mm. <laughs> um, here's why I like it I get to visit other people's farms they get to visit my farm mm. there's lots and lots of farmer to farmer education that takes place during these certification interviews it just took place here today yeah for sure. So I think that's part of what I really respect about CNG. So just to be clear, all of the um, standards are very close to or stricter than the organic standards that um, organic farms have to follow. Mm. But it, this program was designed primarily for smaller farms, although there are some pretty big CNG farms out there um, and some pretty tiny ones. Um, as a as a more affordable way of getting certified while still meeting those kinds of standards But as I said, I I could perfectly well certify the other way for the size farm I am and I've chosen to stay with CNG because I think that it's an exciting program I think that the peer-to-peer -peer aspect of it is just brilliant hmm. Absolutely totally brilliant more farmer to farmer connection rather than just some Kind yeah. of a random corporate entity. Yeah, and because you, you have to get certified by a different farm, certify another different farm, you meet over the course of like any given two year period at least three other farmers. Hmm. Usually four or five. So in a way you know? building community. It really does. It really does. I mean it's because of CNG that I ended up in actually two different farmer networks for buying my supplies at reduced prices in okay. farmer co-ops and so that's that's been great one of them is much more seed oriented and the other one is much more um, materials oriented but they're both opportunities for me to save money and I wouldn't have I wouldn't have met those people if it wasn't for CNG okay. so yeah that's a beautiful thing so with uh, so how many years have you been farming oh my god I started when I was 10 and I'll be 69 this summer Woo! but um, full-time I've been I've been farming the last 11 years and um, during that time moved from mostly vegetables to mostly flowers because I am getting older and the work is a little lighter although that's debatable <laughs> um, and it's just fun it makes me happy to, to grow flowers so. so is it just you yeah. by yourself or so my husband does my tractor work but he still works full-time okay and um, we don't do as much tractor work as we used to do um he'll cut grass with it in like pastures that need to be trimmed down and then we'll use that in mulch or in compost making um don't do very much tilling we're really trying to get away from it we're tarping instead more and more mm. um and it's amazing to me still it blows me away that you can tarp in an entire cover crop in two or three weeks so yeah so that's a really good thing um, so he helps me with those things and then I have some friends who um, often come around to help with other things just because our farm is a beautiful place and it's fun to help for sure they're crazy so but really it is fun so uh, what it, with your many years of experience what is your advice to someone who is thinking about farming or someone who is just getting started well I have given you some advice today myself um, so the advice that I've given you is to think about the scale in terms of um, what you have time and energy to produce, but also um, you've got plenty of land here that is available to you, but the soil hasn't yet been brought up to its sort of highest potential. And so what you, and you've got, you've got some real problems like deer coming through the field from the woods 
that are not going to go away. And so coming up with strategies to discourage the deer without having to provide a full-fledged fence are going to be really important. Sizing it up to where it is marketable, where you can have enough customers to pay all your expenses. There's a sort of a right size mystery mm. because there's I am the wrong size. Okay. Still, I am the wrong size You're because... You're still finding that medium. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I had employees for a couple of years and I didn't like it. It didn't work out well for me, not because I didn't have good relationships with people, but because the tax laws in New York are really, 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 really horrible. And so unless you are all the way up at about 10 employees, it's not really cost effective to have them at all. And I didn't want to make the jump from working alone to working with 10 employees. Mm. I don't, I don't aspire to that. Not now, actually not ever. So I had to roll back a little bit um, rather than continuing to expand. When I, once I realized the most money I've lost farming was the year I had employees. Mm. So. Um, That's definitely food so for when, thought. Yeah, yeah, there's some real advantages to staying small enough to be manageable by, by just yourself. You probably and, have a, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you have probably have a deeper connection to your local community because of that. You don't have to size up to this almost unmanageable spectrum. Yeah. So by being able to stay smaller, you almost have that more local interconnectedness. I think that there are some farmers who are bigger who've pulled that off. Okay. Um, it, a lot of it really is your personal style. Like, you know, um, if I was better at marketing, I would definitely make more money than I make with just what I'm growing. Um, if I um, was big enough that I had somebody else do the marketing for me so I never had to do it again, that would be awesome, but that's not gonna happen. Um, so I think, I think that each person and each place has sort of the right size for that place. So like what I'm seeing for you here is you've got space for a very small garden that could easily be very much bigger by just making um, hills of squash that surround everything that you've done. Um, hills of squashes and pumpkins in, um, in very small pools of good soil that you've already um, collected from the paths, actually, um, as you set up your first garden. And so you could expand your productivity hugely without having to um, do very much more prep at mm. all. And I'm excited by that because that's a, you know, I remember the year that my kids grew a quarter acre of squash and we didn't even know what to do with it. So I called some restaurants, I called some co-ops. I said, how many pounds of perfect delicata would you like to buy? up to 2000 and you know we ended up selling almost all of it to one place it was amazing like all this squash like filled the whole back of my pickup truck with squash filled it and they will come right it was amazing it was it blew their minds you know how much squash they sold that year so um i think that there are there are sort of ways to approach um, the break-in period where you do some things that are much less fussy like you can you can produce a lot of greens in a very small space but you can also produce when you have as much space as you've got you can produce a lot of stuff that's less work than greens mm. in less time because you've got more area mm. and so you know it's it's fun to be able to look at something like this and go like oh there's opportunities blank canvas here yeah, plus you have access to unloaded, unlimited amounts of wood chips, which I'm like so jealous which is of. Just right across I can through those trees over there. hardly stand it. Oh my goodness. Maybe and I'll so, bring you some buckets when we make the uh, exchange. Well, <laughs> with, <laughs> it probably wouldn't do good for your your size but, scale, but yeah. you know, well, I could fill up the back no, of my I actually, Subaru. I, I do get I get tree pruning companies to drop off piles of wood chips periodically. What I'm really looking for is a bunch more hardwood chips and. You're looking for a bunch of hardwood chips too because I'm totally seeing this growing a whole bunch of mushrooms in your wood chip paths. Mm, I it's love, very exciting. I really do love the vision. Um, so, Kingstropharia coming your way soon. Yes, mushrooms in the paths. I like it.
Okay, so, so any other questions today? Yeah, what is a uh, what is a goal of yours that you set out to accomplish in oh, the season this of 2022? Year. Ooh. Hmm. Well, I for the first time ever am planning to take 2 weeks off in the middle of the season. How do you plan to do that? Time trades. Okay. So, um I have some wonderful customers who I provide with a lot of, of uh, foliage and flowers for their wedding business. Okay. And they are going to cover for me while I am gone in exchange for some of my product. The perfect trade for me. And they do know how to pick and how to you know how to how to harvest it correctly yeah you obviously like wouldn't that. trust these people unless right they were so I have people who will you know have to make sure that all my watering is is down you might correctly. have to make a few phone calls I'll while be, you're gone or something probably be monitoring some things gonna be looking to drip line some beds I've never bothered to drip line before because I mostly just do spot watering but if I'm gonna be gone for those two weeks if it's really wet, no problem. If it's really dry, could be a problem. Hmm. Even you know, just because it's for so long. But yeah, I'm super excited to take a vacation. Hey, yeah. Well, it seems like with all your hard work and dedication, it's much deserved. Well, it's a little crazy, but my granddaughter, I promised her a special trip. So, yeah. Well, you gotta gotta keep that promise, right? Oh yeah. So we got the three three quick little rapid questions. Okay. We're just gonna shoot them at you quick. So, what is your favorite flower that you grow? What is your favorite vegetable to eat? And your favorite tool to use? I'm gonna start with tool. Okay. My favorite tool, I will show you when you, I, when you visit my farm, but it's a very short digging fork. It's not a pitchfork, it's a digging fork that happens to have square tines. So each tine is a little thinner than my pinky finger and it's completely square. It's not flat at all. Hmm. And it's, so it's very strong. It's actually very light, which is amazing considering how much steel is in it. And um, I, can, I can prep for transplanting a bed of flowers, like go in and anything that wasn't perfect from under the tarp, I can get it completely ready in like 10 minutes in wow. a big bed. Game changer. Big beds, yeah, it's great. It's As just opposed a great to fork. you used to do with hand? Well, no, I've had that fork for a long time, but still to me, it's better than a digging fork, like the big broad forks. Yep. I mean, I have a broad fork. I don't love broad forks. Um, I More love for my aerating fork. the soil. Yeah, they're, they're great. Like, especially when you're getting started and you're really going into hard, hard pan and old field that's been badly treated. Almost kind of like this. Yeah, like broad forks on. are great. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I have one that I used to use a lot, and now it's a loner tool. Got you. Just so you know. Okay. Note taken. <laughs> so anyway, flower and um, vegetable. Favorite vegetable? Oh gosh. We were talking about those squashes mm, before. Yeah, my very favorite vegetable, though. This week, my favorite vegetables have been. Um, the lettuces that have overwintered in my high tunnel. Yeah, they're pretty yummy. Mm, cause they in get, fact, quite delicious. They get sweeter with those frosts, right? They're, they're good. Or not they're so much good. the lettuce. I no, they're lettuce-y. Okay. They're lettuce-y. Got you. Yeah. Um, and my favorite flower. Hmm. I am very... How many flowers do you grow before you answer that one? Like, how many varieties of flowers? Something like 400. Whoo! Um, Those bees are loving your place. I think I, this week, I'm loving columbine. I was, like, taking a quick look at the plantings that I did last year of columbine, and they're just sending up in my barely thought-out field. They're just sending up their fruit little curly tendrils and I'm so excited for them. Mm, those are the hardies then, right? If oh yeah, they are. Okay. They're a great perennial. Right yeah. On. They just get better and better all the time. Awesome. So, yeah. Well, hey, Rebecca, thank you so much for coming today and doing and, this uh, interview yeah. and certifying Jay's <laughs> grass-fed garden for certified uh, naturally grown. Thank yep. you very much. You have a great evening and peace out to all of you. Thanks for watching.